Welcome to worship in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. I wore my special clergy uh, face uh, mask today. This, uh, as, a, as a reminder here on the 4th of July weekend for all of us, we always say to have a safe and sane 4th of July, and now uh, with the COVID-19 crisis upon us, to be safe means taking great precautions. And so we pray that you are being safe and that we are very pleased that you are finding us in worship online in this on-demand worship service. Uh, thanks be to God that the technology exists for us to safely come together as the body of Christ, each in our own homes, to worship together. Uh, this Sunday, I have just a few items of note. If you are hearing about this before 10 a.m. on Sunday, July 5th, this is worship for Sunday, July 5th, but. Uh, I would let you know that we are having a drive-in communion at the church at uh, 17th and L Streets. Uh, you would come in through the back alley, uh, and we will, you know, have communion for about cars that would drive in um, no more than five at a time. You don't need to sign up in advance, just kind of wait and come in through the back alley, and uh, someone from our property staff will assist you in getting to your right spot. But here's the deal, it's touchless. So you need to bring bread and grape juice. Of course, you could just commune with bread. That's totally fine. But this is a way for us to receive the Holy Sacrament. There'll be a brief uh, communion uh, liturgy that Pastor John will do for those who come this Sunday from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. for drive-in communion. No previous sign-up necessary online. And then finally, I want to say that Pastor Amy will be having the coffee chat immediately after the watch party. We have a watch party for worship at 10.15. Uh, if you want to find, find that uh, invitation at our website, and then also the invitation to find us for our coffee chat, Pastor Amy will have a, a, a conversation partner. Council member Julie Spezia will be, uh, they'll be talking about the priorities of the church and all that we are doing together. Our four-pronged uh, focus is uh, really evident in what I'm talking about. It's online, outdoors, in memorial. For those people who have uh, had loved ones die, we really want to be there for them and finally serve us for our neighbor in need. That's our focus through Labor Day, and we are glad you are with us here at St. John's. Welcome to worship. Christ died to save all people so that we might be freed to serve all people. Yet we live in a world where evil exists and sin resides. We cannot escape it of our own will. Despite good intentions, we hurt each other and do not see the face of God in our neighbors. And so with all the people of God, we confess our sin that separates us from the one and from one another. O most human one, come down to earth. You know our world of pain and suffering and love it still. Forgive us our sins, save us from the time of trial, restore us to hope, rejoin us to you, and reconcile us to each other. We confess this to you and ask for your forgiveness in the name of Christ. We reclaim our baptismal calls into the body of Christ. We are beloved, we live into the joy and freedom to love and serve with all people. Amen. We have a dream, this nation will arise and truly live according to
The grace of Jesus Christ, our Savior, the reconciling love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us pray. You are great, O God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, and serve you, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from the prophet Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he. Humble and riding on a donkey. A colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare, that I will restore to you double. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. I, I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing that I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree the law is good, but in fact, it's no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it, for I do not do the good I want. But the evil that I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law in my mind making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then, with my mind, I am a slave to the law of God, but with my flesh, I am a slave to the law of sin. Holy wisdom, holy word, thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowd, But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another, We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants, Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
At this time, you may pause this worship service and return to the email that transmitted it, where you'll find the children's message, which is given by Pastor Frank this week. Sisters and brothers, grace to you in peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Rebecca Turnbaugh shared with me a recent episode of the podcast The Daily from the New York Times, titled A Weekend of Pain and Protest. The focus was on the protests immediately following the killing of George Floyd at the hands of police. The journalist narrating the first segment described a video she had seen of a small group of protesters in Charlotte, North Carolina. There were two black men, one 45 years old, the other 31. And they're arguing passionately about the most effective way to protest as to have their voices heard. The older man believes that destruction and violence against property is the only way to make white people understand the pain black people experience every time a black person is killed by authorities. The 31-year-old, on the other hand, believes the violent protests are counterproductive because they only give those with power an excuse to dismiss black, the voices of black Americans and the true message behind the protests. The only thing they both agree on is how tired they are and how burdened by the knowledge that nothing seems to change. The men are shouting at one another, wanting to be heard. Their pain is evident in the cracking of their voices, particularly as they engage a black teenager who is 16 years old. The younger of the two men, the two older men, gets in the boy's face and tells him that violence will only lead to his own harm and that it's not worth it that in 10 years he will only be in the same place they are today, that unless this teen and his generation of black youth come up with a new way to have their voices heard, things will, th things will never change. Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. The question for us is what does Jesus ask of us if the burdens are not immediately ours, but those of our fellow human beings? And what do we do when we do not know what to do that will make a difference? And that this in itself feels like a burden to us, to care deeply about the plight and the burden of our neighbor, but not to know how to act. Sometimes it feels like no matter what we do, we can't win. I know there are people out there who feel, feel like no matter how good their intentions, they will always be wrong. Like some people say we need to speak and others say we need to be silent. Maybe it's both, but it's hard to know what the truth is and it weighs heavy on us. So it feels like a trap that Jesus is holding out to us. Take this yoke upon you because the burden is light, Jesus says. And yet we know from other places in the gospel that the cost of discipleship is not small. It sounds less like a relief and a rest and a lot like more work for us. With social media and constant news cycles, we know so much about the world's pain in addition to the pain and the struggles each of us deals with in our own spheres. It feels like we are the ones batted about between the children in the marketplaces. Or maybe, for a more modern update, the ones torn between Facebook and Twitter posts competing for our attention and action. Or between the skewed agendas of MSNBC and Fox News. Then there's Jesus telling us to take his yoke upon us too. Hmm. How do we know whose voice to listen to. Now I'll admit that as a city person, I don't know much about yoking. And Jesus uses this agricultural illustration with his disciples, assuming they would know just what he was talking about. But I do remember this one time in Michigan at the Henry Ford Village when I learned something about being yoked. At this place that is a recreated old timey village, you can ride in a wagon that is pulled by two huge draft horses, 
who are yoked together side by side. They even have cute names like Ted and Ned. The day that I was there, the driver explained how it works between these two horses. That Ned, the less experienced horse, was yoked with Ted, the more experienced one, so that he could learn from Ted how to pull the weight of the wagon. And in times when one of them is tired or not able to pull as much, the other steps up to take more of the burden. And if one is being lazy and holding back, the other pulls forward, encouraging the other to keep moving. They learn from one another and develop a rhythm that makes bearing the burden easier. I suddenly understood this invitation from Jesus a little better. He isn't saying that he will put a yoke on us as if he were the driver directing us to pull, along, to pull alone. He is inviting us to be yoked alongside him, to learn from him how we are to pull the weight of the world faithfully, and also when to rest a little and wait for the spirit of the risen Christ to pull us forward when we want to hang back and give up. Well, back to that podcast, The Daily, and the interaction between the protesters in North Carolina. The journalist narrating what she has gleaned from this video says that she hears hopelessness in the words and the voices of these two men. She can imagine the futility the older men feel after carrying this burden for so long with little change. But then she notes for the listener that for the sake of the boy in their midst, they do not leave it there. They must give him hope for a different future and a possibility that he and his generation can do things differently. Otherwise, he might as well burn it all down. Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. This is as much an invitation as a promise. It sounds like we have a choice whether to take on this yoke or not. But the truth is that in our baptisms, we were yoked with Jesus into relationship with one another, made members in the body of Christ for the sake of the world. It can be a big task, and we might feel helpless and hopeless to tackle any of the huge problems that are facing humanity at this very moment. But our faith promises that the heft of the present burden leads us to true freedom. Jesus invites us to take this yoke upon us. And if we are all yoked together, then we are all pulling the weight with one another. There is a modern translation of the Bible called The Message. Maybe some of you have taken a look at it here and there. Sometimes it takes a hokey tone that makes me laugh. But several years ago, I came upon the translation of our passage from Matthew today, and it has stuck with me as a powerful reminder of Jesus' invitation. Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. The line I have held closely since first reading it is this one. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Truly following Jesus' voice amid the din of competing sound bites is the work of discipleship. We sometimes get so lost that we find ourselves batted about between one false truth and another, between one or another opinion about what we should be doing or how we should act, between our own sense of guilt and our desire to do more. But our faith reminds us that we are not the ones in charge. Jesus is. And that apart from Christ, 
our work can become futile and even burdensome. But when our intentions are good, even when our intentions are good, but if we're listening to the wrong voices instead of Jesus, we can easily slip into hopelessness and exhaustion. Our freedom in Christ is not freedom from, but freedom to. Not freedom from the pain of the other, but freedom to enter one another's pain, knowing Jesus goes alongside us and alongside them. To know that Jesus doesn't let us hang back forever, but nudges and urges us toward a more beautiful future, one in which the promises of God's kingdom are fully realized. This is the hope that keeps us from burning it all down or giving up entirely. Taking Jesus' yoke upon us is about pulling the weight of the burdens of our fellow human beings. And when we don't know how to pull, listening and learning from those who have borne the burdens before. And above all, heeding the voice of Christ to follow and to join him in this work. Thanks be to God. Amen. into spiritual unity with one another and the whole creation. Let us pray for our shared world. Holy God, lead us along the path of faith and help us to navigate its many curves. Guide us as we proclaim your grace and share your word. Help us to make your church a welcoming community for all and find common ground so that we may create a united, loving church. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Nurturing Lord, watch over all your creatures, great and small, and the lands in which they dwell. Encourage loving care of your creation. Help us to preserve the natural beauty of wide open plains, thick wooded forests, and deep blue seas. Guide us in reducing pollution and living more sustainably. Help us all to be good stewards of your creation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, amidst the celebration of our nationhood, guide us in developing a just and welcome nation. Embolden our nation to have productive, eye-opening, and healing conversations, allowing us to share each other's burdens and support one another as we put encouraging words into action. Free us from biases that hinder relationship building and lead us to expansive love for our neighbors. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Healer God, we pray for all who are tired, sick, lonely, despairing, and oppressed. Be with those who cry out in need and those who shoulder their burdens silently. Today we ask that your healing hands rest especially on Denny, Cheryl, Kari, Dan, Peggy, John, Vern, Joanne, Thomas, all our Stephen ministers and those in their care and those we name silently in our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, hold near to you those who are grieving. Today our prayers and condolences go to Nicole Omke and the Gipes family at the death of David Gipes 
and to the family of Dana Wagner at the death of Mike McCollin, to John Morales and family at the death of Daniel Morales, and to Esperanza Foft and family at the death of her uncle, Luis Alatorre Acibes. Comfort them in their grief and help them to feel your presence and know you are near. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Compassionate Lord, direct leaders toward decisions that will support and protect all people, charting the smoothest course through the choppy and unfamiliar waters of this pandemic. Watch over healthcare workers, the elderly, store employees, male personnel, and all others at risk. Be with those who are sick and those who feel anxious, isolated, or depressed in the face of the virus. Let those who have worked tirelessly for the benefit of others know our unending appreciation. Encourage safe practices and watch over those unable to do them. During this difficult time, help us to treat everyone with compassion and grace. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Everlasting God, be with this and every community. Encourage love over hate and empathy with all. Give us the compassion we need to do your good works in the world. Guide us to notice the ways your love transforms our lives so that we may share that unconditional love in the world. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. All these prayers we lift up to you, O Lord, spoken and unspoken, trusting in your everlasting mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you and your household.
Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin, as, sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless and keep you this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord, and live God's love in the world. Amen.